Hello my friends, welcome here to another video on my channel. Today we are going to be discussing the freshly released Math with Confidence Grade 4. I'm going to be doing a flip through video for you, so stay tuned if you want to see more. All right, if you're new here, I'm Christine, a homeschooling mom of three. And if you have not been on my channel at all, you won't know that I have been a great fan of Math with Confidence for the past couple of years. I've been using it with my children. This year I'm using it with all three of my kids and I really, really, really like the curriculum. I've got lots of videos on my channel sharing about it, um, showing you it, showing uh, a lesson, how that looks um, as I'm using it with one of my kids. Um, so I love this curriculum and I've recommended it to a lot of people. So with that said, I just want to, um, with full transparency, let you know that this level of Math with Confidence was very kindly sent to me for free from Kate, um, the author of said curriculum. Um, now she sent it to me with zero strings attached. Um, she very, very kindly reached out and said that she had seen all my videos on my channel and as a thank you, she just wanted to send me the next grade up um, and no, with no expectations. So I'm not doing this video because she sent it to me, but I did want to just say that I didn't pay for this one. I have paid for all the other grade levels um, that I have shared before, but not this one. And I also just think it's really, really sweet of Kate to have reached out um, and shared it with me. So thank you very much, Kate. I appreciate it. Um, but I do want to show you through this curriculum. So we have not started to use it just yet. We've still got a little bit left of grade three to get through. Um, and then we will be moving on to grade four. Um, we've only got about, I think two units left in grade three or two and a bit units left in grade three. Um, and then we'll move on to grade four. But in the meantime, I thought that you and I could peruse through grade four and have a look and see how it's laid out. I'm like from having printed out, I know that it's laid out pretty much the same as um, grade three, which I really, really like. I like the layout of it. I like um, the flow of it. So I'm excited to have more of the same good stuff. So if you're interested in seeing grade four, keep watching. I'm gonna flip the camera around and we'll have a look through the books and what you get. Okay, so let's start this flip through. So I do wanna point out that this is the PDF version of um, Math with Confidence grade four. Um, if you are getting the print version, you will get one big teacher's guide. And it does come like that in the PDF, it comes as one guide. I prefer to bind mine in about three parts just because it's a smaller book to work with then. Um, so that's how I do it. So it, it, if you are buying the printed version, it's not going to come like this. It's not gonna come spiral bound, it will come perfect bound and um, it'll be one big book. However, you will get the two workbooks, um, but they won't be spiral bound. They'll also be perfect bound. So that's just something I wanna point out because I often get people asking me like, how did you get spiral, like where'd you get the spiral bound <laughs> copy or version? I'm like, because I did it myself at home. So that's why it looks like this. Um, the other thing is that there, if you're buying the print copy, or sorry, the PDF version, um, they have a printer friendly version that you will get as well as the standard one. And so your pages, I mean, they're still colorful, but the background is not all full of color like the printed versions are. So it's gonna save you money on ink. Um, although I printed this out on my Epson EcoTank and I didn't notice the um, ink going down basically at all. <laughs> so it's, if you've got a printer like that, that's very economical. You're, it really does not take much ink. At all. So let's go ahead and do a flip through. Now I have obviously used Math with Confidence. I've used every grade that they've got out so far except for this one. We haven't started this one yet, but I have a basic idea about the layout and how things work. So I'm gonna go through the teacher's guide with you first. Um, and as I've said in other videos, this is not a curriculum you can use without the teacher's guide. The teacher's guide is the meat of the program. The workbooks um, they work in conjunction, but they really back up the techniques that you are teaching your child um, in the workbook, so or in the teacher's guide, I mean. So like I said, I've split mine into three different ones, but they're all the same book. Uh, let's just go through here. So you've got your introduction, 
you've got your table of contents. I really like how simplified everything is in this curriculum. It's easy to find stuff. Um, that's laid out nicely. Then you've got a welcome page here. Now, what is written in here is incredibly helpful. If you're not confident about teaching math or you're new to teaching it, it's just, this is a wealth of knowledge. It is so well laid out. Um, it'll tell you how to use the curriculum. I actually get surprised how many people I see asking questions in different Facebook groups, like homeschool Facebook groups on how, like why certain things in their curriculum or whatever. And it's like very obvious that they haven't read this stuff. This stuff tells you everything you need to know about the curriculum and how to use it. So make sure you take the time to read it because it really does help. Um, here's your introduction. Like here it says the goals. So you're like, you can understand what it is that you're aiming for your child to learn that year. Um, it goes through the different units, how things are laid out. Here showing you like how it's scripted for the parent. I mean, there's quite a few pages. So like make yourself a cup of tea or coffee or whatever your beverage of choice is and sit down and read it all because it is well worth it. Will help you be a lot more confident. Um, here is the section on what you need. Now, I do not think that I'm gonna have to add to my math kit much at all. I'm pretty sure all I need is a protractor because the um, math manipulatives that are used in previous grades um, are also used in this grade. And so there's not much I have to add to it. I already have shapes. I already have base 10 blocks. Um, play money we've got, counters we've got. So a lot of it is repeated from previous grades and I'm pretty sure the protractor is the only thing that I need to add to that. Um, yeah, here it says protractor in here. But one of the things I love about this curriculum is how easy it is to source your manipulatives. They're not super expensive and they're reused over and over again in different grade levels. So that's really great. Um, I will say we don't tend to use manipulatives a lot now that my son's in third, he's almost finished. He doesn't use them a lot, but he's very uh, competent in math. It's one of his natural strengths. Um, whereas with my younger daughter, I do tend to use them more, but I just find that we don't rely on them as heavily the older they get. Of course, things like a protractor, that's different, like you need that. But um, yeah, just things like counting blocks and stuff we don't always need. So here at the beginning of each unit, there is um, an overview of what the unit is going to cover. It tells you what you need, what extra things you might need, um, and, and just like some helpful tips. So these are really great to read. Now in Math with Confidence, Four. I'm pretty sure that there are 16 units. I will double check. I should have looked at that here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are. So 16 units. So that's the same as third grade. And something that changed from second grade to third grade is in kindergarten, first and second, it's broken down into weeks. So you've got like four and then an optional fifth lesson um, every week. Whereas this is just broken into units. So it can take you, you know, a couple weeks, two to three weeks to get through a unit, or you may do it faster. It just depends on the um, speed at which your child is learning and understanding and all of that. And I like that as they get up to the concepts like multiplication and division. Um, kids sometimes just need a little bit of extra time on those things. And so I feel like it's great because instead of it being tied into like, this will take your child one year to get through, it's just like, no, you go through it at the pace they need to go through it at and um, it's laid out in that way. So very, still like very structured. Um, I'm like very type A, I like all my stuff to be organized. So I don't feel like it's like all over the place, but there's flexibility built into it. And so I really like that. So uh, let's get back to where we were. So there was an overview of the unit and then you have your first lesson. And this is pretty much identical to third grade math with confidence. You've got here, this little box, which I really like. I'll zoom in for you a bit. Um, where it shows you the purpose of the lesson and the materials that you'll need. I really, really like that. I look at it very quickly because I find that having everything at hand at the beginning of the lesson instead of dashing out halfway through helps to retain my kids' attention. So there's that. Um, and then you've got your warm up, which is optional, um, but this is usually like where they're doing review and things like that. Um, not always, but 
often that's where they have their review or their memory work. Memory work is often there as well. And then you move into the part of the lesson, which is the first bit. And this, just like third grade, uses the first page of the workbook to help teach the concept that is being taught in that lesson for the day. And it'll break it down into different activities. So there is activity A, B, and now C is a game. And so this is just like previous grades, lots of fun games, but also you can make it work for you. So we don't always do all of the games, but we do a lot of them because my kids really enjoy them. And then you move on to the next lesson. And as you can see, the things that are in bold are the things that the uh, teacher is saying to the child. Okay, so that's the scripted part of the lesson. And then everything that's not in bold is just for you um, to read through as the parent. And then that is basically how the teacher's guide carries on until you get to the end of the unit. And at the end of each unit, you have an optional lesson. So if you feel like your child would benefit from this lesson, you can do it. Or if they just want to do it for fun, they can also do it. I don't tend to do these. I just have my child do the unit wrap up in their workbook. And I, I use it as a bit of an assessment to make sure that they understand what's been taught in the unit. Um, but yeah, so that's your optional lesson there. And then the answer key is at the end of each unit. So you can go through and check all of the answers for your child's worksheets. And then you get to the end of unit one and there is a checkpoint. So at the end of every unit, there's a checkpoint. And this is what your expectation should be of your child after they've gone through that unit. And if they're not there yet, then there are really helpful suggestions on what to do about it um, and how to move forward. And that is what I love about this curriculum. It does not leave you hanging. It gives you lots of hand holding and support as the parent, um, which is incredibly Helpful, especially if you're new to homeschooling. But um, yeah, I just think it's a fantastic curriculum in that sense. And then you move on to unit two and it's exactly the same layout. So it goes through all of that. And I'm gonna skip to the last book here because at the end of the book, you have your appendix. And I just wanna show you it. It looks like, excuse the ugly lines in my printing here. That was my printer having a little hissy fit. All right, so here you have picture books and Math with Confidence is known for this. She includes picture books, um, picture book suggestions. If that's something you want to include in your math to add some literature into it, then there are fantastic literature selections there. Um, then you have your memory work. So these are all the things that your child should be learning throughout the year and you will constantly review this. It is built into lessons, but this is great to have if you wanna just have it out and go over it. Again, new memory work. And then you have the scope and sequence at the back. Super helpful for understanding what's happening and like being able to compare if you're trying to switch over from another curriculum, you can see, you know, how your child fits into this. You've got a full materials list at the back here of everything you will need for the entire thing. And most of them are very, very, very basic and things that you'll have around the house. And then you have your black line masters. And I want to point out that these are available on their website. So you can print, it's like a PDF you can print off, um, which is super helpful because like you might not want to make photocopies from the back of your book if you bought the printed version. Um, and also you might lose it or whatever, whatever reason there is, you can print these off. And I have like from previous grades, printed them off and uh, laminated them especially for pages like these, which I can like show my kid and have them look at, and then they can be a little bit more independent with their work if they just need some reminders. Um, but they've got all of these. They've got your multiplication chart. Um, this is an assessment for multiplication. Then you've got your place value charts. Um, some of these are the same as in previous grades. So you can like, if you're, not wanting to print everything out, you can always go back um, and see if you've already got them from having used them before. Um, you, this one right here is a new one. I'm looking forward to using this because I've heard it's pretty cool little manipulative. 
um, these cards. And I have printed these double-sided by mistake. Whoopsie daisies. Um, <laughs> they're supposed, they will come single-sided. So you're not like cutting into the thing on the front. And here you've got more shapes. Um, and these ones are good. Like it will tell you which ones here. Like you do not need these if you have base 10 blocks. So these are things, if you do not have the physical manipulatives, do not fear, do not feel like you have to go out and buy them. They're in the book. You can actually cut them out and um, use the ones from in the book and same with the money. So um, the other thing not to get too stuck on, I mean, there's some manipulatives that you'll definitely need the exact version of, but like things like counters, I mean, you could be really creative about which kind of, like what you use for counters. So think outside the box. Um, don't feel like you have to go spend a fortune on like um, curriculum specific or like educational specific manipulatives. I mean, you can use dried beans, you know, it's fine. It's just something for your child to have that's tangible. So that is what the teacher's guide looks like. Again, very much the same as third grade. Now these are the workbooks and as was the case in third grade, it's a part A and a part B. Okay, so part A here is a workbook. You've got a table of contents again. So this covers unit up to unit eight. And then on the first page, you've got your lesson activities. So this is what you're going to use to teach the lesson and it correlates with like it says A, B and C. And if you remember in the teacher's guide, it said activity A. So you're going to use this part of the page for the first activity. And then you've got activity B here and then the game was activity C. So that's what you're going to do on that. And then you've got two more pages for each lesson. And the first page is practice. Um, covering the concepts that you just taught in the lesson. So your child can either do this alongside you if they need a little bit more help or they could do it independently. What I often do is I use this page that's next. This is also part of the same lesson. This is the review page and this covers everything, like stuff they've already learned before. So this is nothing new. This is reviewing concepts that have previously been taught. So what I do with my kids is I get them to do this first. So they go ahead, cause I'm usually busy working with their younger, um, sister, they do this first and then I will come and I will teach them the lesson and we will go through the lesson. And then if they don't have time to complete this before we need to move on to something else, they'll complete it a little bit later on in our school day. And I find that works really well because um, it just breaks up the lesson a little bit and they don't feel so overwhelmed by, you know, the number of problems that they have to do. Not that there are a lot of problems. I feel like this is very reasonable, but if it is a particularly challenging subject for them, say it's multiplication and they're not really proficient in it yet. Um, I find it really helps to sort of break up the lesson a little bit like that. And um, I can't remember where I listened to it. it was on somebody's video who was talking about math with confidence. It might've even been Kate herself, Kate Snow, um, who said that there's research to show that having like a delay between when a concept is taught and then having to like um, work on prob problems that use that concept, if there's a delay between them, it helps to solidify the information just a, a bit more because the brain has to work a little bit harder to recall the facts that they've just learned. So I don't know, I haven't been doing that intentionally, but um, if that is the case, that's really cool. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. Don't feel like your child has to sit down and do this all in one big chunk. Um, it doesn't have to be like that. However, in saying that, I also don't feel like it takes very long to do a lesson. For us, it has typically taken 10, 15 minutes to complete the lesson together. Um, this page shouldn't take my child more than 10 minutes, 10, 15, as long as they're applying themselves. And then again, this. So like I would say 30, 40 minutes, maybe I, I, 40 minutes would really be pushing it, honestly. I would say it's about 30 minutes to get through a whole lesson. Um, sometimes less than that, but very rarely longer than that. So that's something to bear in mind. So that is what your workbook looks like. Every lesson is laid out like that. You have your lesson um, activities page, you have a practice page, and then you have the review page. Um, and sometimes if there are things that my, I know my son has like really got down pat and he just doesn't need to spend the time on it that day. I'll let him skip some things sometimes. Um, it's not very often I do that, but if I feel like his workload's been particularly heavy that day and he's got some things like, you know, he just knows them inside out, 
I'll be like, okay, that's fine. Especially if it's on the review page. Like I treat this a little bit more optional than, um, than I do these two pages. Like obviously these two are important. So that's just, I don't know, something to bear in mind. Let me skip through to the end of the first unit because you will find that there is a unit wrap up. And in my experience, these have always been two pages long. You could use this as a test if you wanted to. I just have it as a very sort of informal assessment so I can see how well my child has mastered the concepts taught in that unit. So it's essentially just going over everything that they learned in that unit um, on a page like this and a page like this. And I personally would expect my child to be able to do this independently. Um, if I find, I mean, they might need my help reading something or whatever, but um, for the most part, the actual like work, they should be able to understand what they're being asked to do and to carry it out. If they understand what they've been, you know, taught in the unit. And if not, then I just make note of it and we sort of work on those things a bit more going forward. So that is what a unit looks like. And it just continues like that throughout the rest of the books. You see there's a fun activity there. I One of my favorite things about this curriculum is that those pages are really simplified. We came from another curriculum before that was just so overwhelming because of the amount of writing on the page. And for, at the time, my son was not um, a fluent reader and it was just really, it just freaked him out, honestly. Um, and it took away from the actual math because it was just all about reading then. Um, and I love how simply these pages are laid out. The instructions are really short and to the point. Like even my younger daughter who's doing grade two can do most of it all by herself as far as her review page because she just sees it. She's like, oh yeah, I know what to do, you know? Um, and so if you have a child who does get really overwhelmed by busy pages, this could be a fantastic option for them. Um, I certainly found that it made a huge difference for my son. So this is the first book. This is really interesting. We haven't done any of that. I'm like, oh my goodness, excited about the stuff he's going to learn. We've got, I think, two and a half units left to do in grade three, and then we're moving on to this. So um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's cool because I remember learning this stuff in school now, and I'm like, I cannot believe I'm teaching a child, <laughs> my own child, these concepts now. There we go, really lovely graphics, but just really simple. So that's the end of the first workbook, and then you've got the second one here. This one also has your table of contents in the front and then exactly the same as the previous workbook. You've got lesson activities, a practice page and a review page. And of course, everything's on their website. You can go and look at the scope and sequence. Like there's so much information. Kate is just fantastic about being very open and transparent about what you can expect. Um, yeah, I, I really like this. And a lot of people will look at this and think, oh my goodness, that doesn't look like you know, whatever math you can compare it to whatever other math curriculum. And this looks simple because the pages are laid out simply, but it is not, it is deep. Like my kids have got such a good grasp on math facts and understanding. Um, and I just credit it all to this curriculum. I just think it's really, really good. Um, and my kids enjoy it. I love that there's games in it. I just, especially when things are just challenging, it helps to lighten things up, you know, like, cause there are parts, parts in their math that they're not necessarily going to get super easily. Um, and it just helps to lighten the mood and sort of put the focus more on connection. Um, and I, I really appreciate that. So you can see like there's the units make it a mastery based curriculum, but the review in the workbook means it's constantly spiraling back to topics that they've previously been taught and just reviewing those over and over again.
almost at the end of it. We're up to the last unit, unit 16. And um, I'm excited to see the next grade that comes out. And there's two, still two more grades to come out that Kate hasn't released yet. And um, I will be so sad when we get to the end of them, but I'm just really impressed thus far. And then right at the end, your child will get their own certificate for completing the course. My kids always love those. Um, it's just a really fun sense of achievement for them. So that is a full flip through of the resources of fourth grade math with confidence. If you do have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below because I'm happy to, you know, show more or talk about it more. And I'm sure I will be going through it more as we pick it up and start using it. Um, but this is just the flip through of what I have so far and some thoughts. Well, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope that it answered any questions you might've had. Um, if you do have more questions about the curriculum, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I can answer those for you. I will be doing more videos on this grade level um, as we begin to use it. I can, well, I will do a full review of it once we've completed it. Uh, and I will do probably like a do a lesson video with me at some point um, as I use it with my son. But in the meantime, this is what I have to share. I, I hope you find it helpful and encouraging. And um, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye bye. If the world had more of your smile, what if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars.